The U.S. economy firing on all cylinders, as Deirdre talked about. This week's second quarter GDP number was revised up to 4.2 percent from the initial estimate of 4.1 percent. It's the strongest showing we've seen in nearly four years for this country. The Atlanta Federal Reserve now predicting that third quarter growth of 4.6 percent. And as you heard from Deirdre Bolton, the stock market is going great guns. But will it last into the fall? Joining us now is founder and chief investment officer of the Bonson Group, David Bonson. David, thank you so much for joining us. What is going to keep driving this market higher? Well, it is uh, earnings growth, and the earnings growth is coming from the tax reform bill that has pushed up capital expenditures. There is an increase in productivity coming. An increase in productivity drives profits. We were probably near the seventh or eighth inning of this bull market. Tax reform brought us back to maybe another fifth, sixth inning, giving us a chance to really see a replenishment driving corporate profits. Can you find any reason right now not to buy stocks? Well, I think that if uh, your risk tolerance is such that you're not willing to deal with a certain degree of volatility, the 2017 volatility we had last year, which was basically non-existent, okay, that, that era is gone. 2018 has seen a pickup in volatility, some of it self-induced out of this trade and tariff issue that I think was a big policy mistake out of the Trump administration. But for the most part, volatility is normal in the market. And, and I think that that would be the one argument against owning U.S. stocks is if you're just not willing to put up with some of the ups and downs. Fundamentally, though, profits drive markets and the corporate profit environment, the economic strength we're getting is very, very investable. Is there anything on the horizon that could put a stop to that, that you worry about it being a roadblock for the kind of growth, not just in the overall economy and profits, but even I noticed in the last week that disposable personal income in this country is up 2.9 percent year over year. And those are the types of metrics that I'm not totally sure drive stock prices as much right. as people think. But for, the, but for, say, a retailer, it would, wouldn't it? It would. And, and we happen to not be big investors in the consumer discretionary okay. space. Uh, but I would still argue that that stuff gets priced into markets. Markets are discounting mechanisms. Ultimately, we're more value oriented. I look at the things that I think are underpriced so, in terms of their ability going forward. The energy sector is deep undervalued. Much of the financial sector is still undervalued. But I think that right now what you're looking at is positive earnings growth in a backdrop of a positive economy with some aspects that are underpriced. We probably would not buy the full index right now. I do believe that there is some uh, rich valuations out there. Everybody talks about that in the FANG sector. I've talked about it for a long time. And, and I've been wrong I mean, in the sense that it continues to go higher. I mean, I, I believe it can go higher. I'm not sure that's what the value is, though. I'd rather but, buy the things that are cheaper. But in terms of Apple, Apple, maybe it's not cheap, but you look at the run just in the month of August that Apple had had, where it was one new all-time high after another. Oh, first and we've we owned Apple for years, and we will own it for years. Apple isn't expensive. Apple's trading at a valuation multiple that's extremely reasonable. Apple's a great dividend grower. Apple has the types of metrics we want. I'm more referring to the, the Amazons, Netflixes, and, and Facebooks, that the valuation is such you just have to say it's priced very richly. So, I Apple best performing stock in the Dow for the month of August. That's right. At, but going ahead, looking ahead mm -hmm. of the product announcement that's coming out, we got some details about that. That's in early September. Do you buy? Would you buy Apple ahead of the product announcements, like um, sometime in the second? We would never September. hold a stock that we weren't willing to buy. So the answer is yes. So for new money being deployed, we'd be buying Apple at these levels. Um, but all things, I don't know that the product cycle is necessarily the driver there. Mm -hmm. um, the market has an incredible way of discounting those things ahead of time. Apple, though, is a, a good idea uh, for a value stock right now relative to the balance sheet strength they have and and their uh, free cash flow. David, good to see you. Good Thank you, you so still. much. Thank David you. Bonson joining us.